Hey, <laughs> this is the seven days of science. I can see you sneaking already or watching good. That's how I like him. Hey, dog, nice seeing you. Quarantine really kicked you, no? You ought to take care of yourself, my dude. Haha, uh -huh. hey, you too, Ben. How's it going? Gosh, you are all here. Got to admit, I was worried you wouldn't catch up with this meeting. Sad that I can't see your faces. Ugh. <sighs> well. Well, roll the tape, I guess. <laughs> Starting off the news this week, a study published in the journal PNAS has looked into the impact of the infection Xylella fastidiosa, a pathogen that affects trees, most notably olive trees, but is also dangerous towards almond, plum and cherry trees. Discovered in 2013, the disease is particularly affecting olive plantations in Italy, Spain and Greece, and the researchers say that the economic ramifications of losing so many olive trees could be catastrophic. Not only could it increase the cost of olive oil, but it could cost the industry over 20 billion euros. Still, that's not as much as... Anyway, currently there is no cure for the disease, and the researchers hypothesise that if no action can be taken, then olive oil production could suffer enormously, as the three countries I mentioned, Italy, Spain and Greece, make up 95% of European olive oil production. Also in the news is the brilliant discovery that not just one, but two groups of primates actually made it across the Atlantic from Africa to South America. You may already be aware of the discovery that the New World Monkeys of Mexico, Central and South America, originated from groups that inhabited Afro-Arabia during the Eocene and that likely floated across the ocean on rafts of vegetation. Well, this new discovery has found teeth belonging to another unrelated lineage of primates that appear to have independently made this journey across the Atlantic as well, coming from an African grouping that apparently made the crossing between 35 and 32 million years ago, at a time when a worldwide drop in sea level occurred, probably making the journey a bit easier. It's a truly remarkable discovery, showing that there's plenty more to be discovered about new world primate evolution. First, we have a story that, like more pterosaurs, seems to be becoming somewhat of a tradition around here. Another new sauropod from China. This one has been named Analong Chuangiensis, maybe? And dates back to the Middle Jurassic. The specimen it is based on was originally assigned to another genus and species, however various differences noted by the paleontologists have enabled them to recognise it as distinct, classifying the animal as the earliest branch of the family Mamenchisauridae. This discovery therefore shows the family to be more diverse than we had previously realised, as well as indicating that the evolution of the group is a bit more complex. And finally, there's the description of a new archosauromorph from South America, Elisaurus gondwan Ocadens. The genus name comes from the word Elisar, another name of Aragorns in Lord of the Rings. Elisaurus was discovered in early Triassic aged rocks in southern Brazil, and a phylogenetic analysis has found it to be the sister taxon to the Tanistrophiids, the remarkable long necked Triassic reptiles. This discovery therefore sheds new light on the early evolution and distribution of the group, in addition to indicating that a terrestrial lifestyle was ancestral to Tanistrophiids, a truly fascinating and important finding. Back to Doug in the studio. By the way, have you got it? Yes. I think so. <laughs> anyway. That's it for seven days of science this week. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it, and as always, we'll see you on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs>